Battlefield 1 hasn't seen a major shakeup of the weapons for quite a while now. Post-launch, I think we all remember the 1911 getting a big nerf. That took it from godlike levels down to something a little bit more in line with the others, although I'd still argue it's probably the best all-round sidearm that you can pick right now. And then the French DLC, that introduced some new weapons into the pool. We got the Shoshat, which broke the LMG mold for offering a much higher maximum damage. We got the RSC for the Medic, that gave it a two-shot kill rifle. It's a really good weapon, that one. The Assault, that got a bipodded carbine. I don't think anyone expected that. And then the Scout, it got the Handicap Labelle with its weird reload. But apparently, very soon, we can expect some kind of overhaul to the weapon balancing that's currently in the game. On the Battlefield 1 CTE subreddit the other day, two DICE developers were engaged in a conversation about the brand new Perino 1908 machine gun. That's the new one that I showed you in a video a couple of days back. If you haven't seen that, it's linked on the screen for you now. Lots of players, having seen it and then used it for a short amount of time in the CTE, they might have noticed that it's got a crazy reload system, and they were talking about how that affects the gun's performance. If you leave it to fully reload, that can take quite a long time. You can cancel the reload, you're left with less bullets, but you can start firing quicker, so it's quite a versatile weapon. One Reddit user by the name of Pacman627, he asked a question of one of the developers. Ironically, the developer was called Random Deviation, which I think is hilarious, but here's what Pacman asked. How do you balance out the weapons when you start getting so many of them? Because I notice when you have too many weapons, like in Battlefield 4, some can feel like clones of each other. I like Battlefield 1 for the fact that each weapon feels unique, but with the Perino, now it feels like just a Lewis gun mixed with the Hewitt. What's the unique factor that makes the Perino 1908 stand out? Now this is a fairly good question because you'll get quite a good answer in a minute, but I happen to agree with the user's statement about Battlefield 4. Sure, in that game you got loads of weapons that you could choose from, but there are only so many characteristics in video games that you can change to make a weapon feel different and still fun to use, and many of them in Battlefield 4 felt quite similar. For example, the Org A3 and the SAR-21 very similar weapons. The Ace-23, the M416, the list goes on. The Perino in Battlefield 1 is another slow-firing LMG, which was of course common during World War 1. The higher rate of fire you wanted something to fire at, the more work needed to go into it to keep the thing cool. Most machine guns were water-cooled, equipped with a bipod, and they were used in machine gun nests. Having another slow-firing MG in Battlefield 1 might not seem so appealing, but happily, Random Deviation decided to answer the question, and this is where it gets really interesting. Here's his response. The Perino has a really unique feed mechanism that makes it quite quick to reload as long as you keep it topped off. It also has the slowest overheat of any LMG. Together, these let you shoot for a really long time. He then goes on to quote the other person again, stating that BF4 weapons can feel like clones of one another, and he goes on to say this, but I think this is starting to happen too in Battlefield 1, especially for the low fire rate LMGs where their damage per shot is all so low that they all need almost negligible recoil and they end up feeling the same. I'm actually working on a pretty significant weapon rebalance right now to try and get some more variation between existing weapons and to get myself some more design space for future ones. There's our confirmation. DICE has acknowledged that some of the weapons in the game right now, they need a bit of a shuffle, not only to help them stand out against one another, but also to leave some room in the future for other weapons that will make it in upcoming expansions. Now, I'm sure we all anticipated new weapons coming with future DLCs, but it's always nice to get that confirmed in some way. The Russian DLC is introducing 11 new weapons, and a lot of people thought that, you know, it was still going to be only the 20 weapons over the four DLCs. I think that number has basically been thrown out of the window now. We're getting more maps than ever as well, so it's good to get it confirmed because those numbers don't seem too relevant anymore. It is very interesting, though, to hear the weapons designer be so open about the lack of variety in the LMGs currently in Battlefield 1. 
all of them, minus the Shoshar, use a max damage of 23, which I think surprised a lot of players when they first started playing the game. It's also common knowledge that the support class was one of the least used at the launch of the game, and I wouldn't be surprised if that was still the case now. The primary weapons on offer don't catch my eye like the weapons do in the other classes. Now, as Random Deviation says, the only real ways to make slow-firing LMGs viable, if they all have a maximum 23 damage, is to give them low recoil after the first shot, which of course has higher recoil. The Hewitt, the Lewis Gun, the MG15 and the Bene Merce, they all fire fairly slowly and they all come with 23 max damage. That doesn't really offer much variety other than the fact that the weapons come from different nations. Now the Masson and the BAR, I'd say they're exceptions because they're inherently different in their designs. And I'd say that the BAR competes with the Shoshar to be the most enjoyable LMG to use in Battlefield 1 at the moment. The Shoshar is just a really cool weapon, and because it has a higher maximum damage, but a really slow rate of fire, it makes it feel like almost an automatic shotgun when you fire it. And it can be really, really cool to use, and because it's cool to use, I'll use it more than those slightly boring other slow-firing LMGs. Now, Random Deviation didn't specifically state which weapons were going to be rebalanced, other than the fact that one was coming along in the future. He didn't name anything specifically, he didn't say which classes were going to see more action than others, but overall, I think it's good that DICE is trying to add some spice to the weapons palette. We're 11 months after launch now, and you know, things are getting a little bit stale with the gunplay, so maybe changing things up a little bit would change the meta and bring some other weapons to the forefront and cycle out some of the others. I think that's just healthy balancing for a shooter game. I don't know about you, but I'd love to see more players using shotguns other than the 10A Hunter, and maybe just steering clear of that Hell Regal so much. I don't blame any player out there who uses those weapons, because there's no doubt they are superior to others at the moment, but I'd like to see the Hell Regal maybe have its overheat threshold move down a little bit, say to 25 bullets. That might stop people holding down the fire button all the time, and maybe add a bit more recoil, a bit more spread at range to emphasise its role as an SMG. We now have the defensive variant of the Hell Regal, that comes with a bipod, so that variant could then be further pushed as your long range assault option if you added a little bit more recoil to the factory version. We've also got the SMLE rifle in the Scout class being one of the most popular choices in Battlefield 1 because it offers a shorter engagement range and the weapon has a 100 max damage between 40 and 80 meters. Battlefield 1 is just built to be a little bit shorter overall. Why not change that around a little bit? Maybe shorten the sweet spot range to 45 to 70 meters and give the other rifles a bit more viability. That's just some of my thoughts, and I'd love to hear some of your suggestions down below in the comments. I'm sure you've got loads of different ideas of how some of these weapons could be tweaked, how some of them could be changed or reworked, so that the balance of the game changes a little bit. Let me know down in the comments section. But overall, it is nice to hear that DICE is looking to make some changes. It will change up the meta that people have kind of been stuck in since the launch of Battlefield 1. People know how to use most of these weapons now, which of them are most effective at certain ranges, and then we kind of all fall into this habit of just using the same stuff. Of course, we're all looking forward to those new weapons coming out in the Russian DLC, but how about some of the older weapons being rebalanced and changed? I think it'd be nice to go back to some of those and maybe find out they're a little bit different from what they were the last time you used it, and that makes the whole game a hell of a lot more engaging. If DICE does decide to shake things up a bit, it presents a new challenge, and to have that come along in the same year between the second and the third DLCs, you might find that we have a totally different game on our hands come Christmas time. As I said, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section, give me your opinions on this weapon balancing situation, and I'll be down there reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.